Celebration of Faith, Volume 3, The Virgin Mary, Alexander Schmemann, Part 1, The Mother of God. Introduction. I am certain that both unbelievers and Christian believers are fully aware of the immense and utterly unique role that veneration of Mary, the mother of Jesus, plays in Christian faith and church life. Since earliest times, church tradition has called her the mother of God, the birth giver of God, the most pure, the all holy. In one of the most widespread and widely used prayers, she is praised as more honorable than the cherubim and more inco- and incomparably more glorious than the seraphim. There is no service and almost no prayer in which her name is not mentioned. And her presence in art alone demands our attention, since no image so permeates Christian art of the East and West as the mother image of the mother and child. <clears throat> as soon as we enter an Orthodox church, we see this icon in its place of honor next to the central doors of the icon screen, the royal doors. And just in front of it, a candle stand with a sea of burning candles. Looking up toward the apse, the wall above and behind the altar, the image of Mary is often seen at the center, as if she were the heart of the world, with an inscription, quote, all of creation rejoices in you, O full of grace, unquote. In Russia alone, there used to be more than 300 wonder-working icons of the Mother of God that were accorded extraordinary veneration. A con- continuous stream of prayers, praise, petition, praise, petitions, joy, and excep- exceptional devotion flowed toward her. Today, however, many people, even among those... Today, however, many people, even among those who, as we say today, are interested in religion and have come from atheism to faith, question the meaning of venerating the mother of Jesus Christ. To them, her venerating is no longer self-evident. On the contrary, it is even regarded as problematic. To worship God in Christ is understandable, but hasn't Mary been given too much attention and hasn't her icon overshadowed the icon of her son in popular piety? Hasn't this praise and devotion been exaggerated beyond all reasonable proportion? Here I'm not speaking of unbelievers or atheists or active opponents of religion. To them, this entire cult, this mother cult, or virgin cult as they call it, is from beginning to end nothing but superstition and folk custom, the remnants of ancient ancient pagan worship of Mother Earth and nature and its forces of regeneration. But Christians themselves are asking these questions, and therefore it is all the more essential that we attempt to explain the genuine meaning content and orientation of the church's ancient and continuing glorification of the one who said of herself, For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. Luke chapter 1 verse 48 I say attempt because it is no easy task to give such an explanation. As one of the hymns for the Annunciation says, Let no impure hand touch the living temple of God. The more elevated, the more pure, the more holy, the more beautiful the subject one wants, wants to speak about, the more difficult it is. It is. And to me, it seems impossible for words to fully express precisely what, in this singular image of mother and child, church consciousness has in all ages seen, understood, and come to love and glorify with such joy and tenderness.